G'day, welcome to another episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel. My name is Chris Muir, I'm a Product Manager for ADF or Oracle Corporation. Thanks for joining us and keeping with us in all these episodes here. There's plenty more of good material to come in terms of learning ADF architecture and design. Now, today's episode is on a topic which has probably been the perennial or the ultimate question asked of ADF design and architecture since day one. It is the question that every developer at some point starts to ask and never, everyone seems to come up with all sorts of different answers and I'd finally like to address it in this particular episode. And this is how many root application modules should our application have? Oh, how many times I've heard this question before. So in today's episode, we're going to address that question and we're going to go through the ins and outs of why you would want multiple root application modules. Now, it's essential for this episode that you have viewed the previous episodes on the bounded task flow, data control scope and transaction options. Because what we're going to discover today is those options actually change the answer in the JDeveloper 11G space. Anything you've learned in a previous version of JDeveloper 10G or earlier where we've asked that question, how many root application modules should we have? Well, the answer has changed in the 11G space because of those options on the bounded task flows, that being the data control scope options and the transaction options. So if you haven't already, please go back and review those episodes. What we're going to give you as answers here won't make a lot of sense without that particular material. Now, before actually addressing how many root application modules should we have, we're just gonna go and do a very quick recap of the functionality of root application modules. Just talk about the characteristics so we're all on the same level playing field when talking about the ultimate question, which we're gonna finally have an answer for. So let's take a quick recap on the characteristic of root application modules in ADF business components. Now we know that root application modules are responsible for exposing view objects and client interface methods to the view layer. I always kind of like to think of the root AM as a portal which the view layer looks down into the business services, this being ADF business components in this case, to get at the underlying services. So maybe another way to think of that is it's a gatekeeper. You'd also know that at runtime, a root application module and the associated view objects and the EO caches, the end of the object caches, are instantiated and given to each user session. So ultimately, the AM, the VOs, the EOs are the memory model, the stateful memory model that is carried over a number of HTTP requests for the current user session. The exception to that is, of course, we have session or what we call shared application modules, and they can be instantiated for all users, though it's a little bit of out of context of what we're talking about here. Let's just talk about the basic root application module. We also know that the root application module is responsible for connecting to, say, an Oracle database or any ANSI SQL compliant database. And through its connection under the covers where it uses JWC, it is also responsible, therefore, for the transaction with the database and issuing the commits and rollbacks. Via its configurations, it has either a JWC URL or a Jindy data source configured, and that defines where it connects to. And finally, in addition at runtime, in order to support multiple users using all the different instantiated application modules from a pool, there is a number of application module pool parameters that you can configure to basically define the scalability of your application. The next thing to consider before we consider the ultimate question is the difference between root and nested application modules. Now, as we know, a root application module takes a connection and transactions out with the database and ultimately provides each user session that transaction control with the Oracle database or your ANSI SQL compliant database. Now, it is fine for applications to have more than one root application module, but ultimately what you're saying there is per user session, per root AM, you're taking multiple connections and therefore transactions out with the Oracle database. Now, if you have that requirement in your application, that's fine, but the flip side of that is as one user session multiplies the number of connections, and then you multiply the number of user sessions, you obviously have a wider impact on the database in terms of scalability. So definitely you might want to actually keep the number of root application modules to a smaller number in order to reduce the overhead on scalability. Now the flip side of this is nested application modules. 
Now a nested application module is one that is nested under a root application module and it's really just a design time concept that exists to group view objects into logical, well, nested AMs. So you could ultimately have thousands of view objects arranged or exposed through a root application module, or you could logically break those root, uh, I should say those view objects up into groups, put them under a nested AM, and then nest those application modules, the nested AMs under a root AM. As you're probably already aware though, a nested AM, unlike a root application module, does not have any connection or transaction management with the underlying database. In terms of connecting and uh, doing transactions with the database, commits and rollbacks and all those sort of operations, it delegates that to the root AM. So once you nest an AM, there's no point, for example, tuning the application module pool parameters because again, that's all delegated back to the root AM. Nested AM is really for, is just for design time logical groupings of view objects. Okay, so we've got the basic characteristics of application modules down. And we also understand that the root application modules is probably much more important than the nested application module because the nested AM is just a design time concept. So with root AMs in mind, let's go back to the perennial and ultimate question that every ADF developer has been asking since the beginning of time. How many root application modules should I have in my application? Now, I'm going to show my nerdish qualities here and take a little segue and say this question reminds me of one of those really funny jokes that comes from Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Now, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a cult classic and in that book, a series of books I should say, there is a point where humans go and ask the ultimate computer, what is the answer to the ultimate question of the life, the universe and everything? And after much deliberation, the computer comes back over millions of years and says 42, which everybody goes, huh, 42? That doesn't make any sense. Now, the point of the joke here is, well, 42 is one of Douglas Adams' favorite numbers, but the separate point is, is that the computer then goes on to say, well, maybe the answer's not wrong, but it's in fact the question that's wrong. And often in computing and as a product manager, we see this problem on the forums that when people come and ask us a question, they've actually already framed the answer and they may not necessarily get the answer that they really want because the question has pushed the person who's answering in a particular direction. And it kind of comes back to how many root application modules should I have? Well, before you should consider that, you really need to think about some of the new options we have available, particularly in JDeveloper 11G, such as the banded task load, data control scope, and transaction options. They actually change the question. So in addressing the question, let's actually see, what are some reasons why you might actually want multiple root application modules? Let's look at the reasons, think about the question a little bit more before we actually look at the answer. And unfortunately, the answer isn't going to be 42. There's going to be numerous answers based on your use cases and your requirements. Let's delve into that now. Okay, so let's consider some of the reasons you might want multiple root application modules. Now, the first one is one we already described. For one user session, you don't want just one transaction with the database, you want two or more transactions. So traditionally, we would create multiple root application modules at design time to support that. Now, why would you want that? Well, maybe in your application, you've got different logical pieces of work to be undertaken. Creating a new customer while creating a procurement, uh, procurement entry or an invoice or an invoice line. Okay, so maybe in your application, they need to be separate transactions and that's why you might have created separate root application modules. Another requirement or reason, in, admittedly it is a much rarer one, I only get asked about this one every couple of months, is the ability for your application to commit, uh, connect, I should say, to multiple different data sources. So rather than just connecting to, say, one Oracle database, maybe you want to connect to an Oracle database and also connect to a MySQL database or some other ANSI SQL compliant database. Or maybe it's even a requirement where you need to connect to multiple Oracle databases or even multiple Oracle schema accounts. So this rather rare requirement, and it is rare, um, in this case you would kind of think, well, maybe I need multiple root application modules in this context. A further really rare requirement that might drive you to multiple root application modules is that of your application module pooling tuning options. 
Now, you might have a set of VOs and another set of VOs that are potentially dependent on their use or their characteristics of how the user sessions are using them. You might actually want to tune the application module pulling parameters differently for each set of view objects. Now, this is an incredibly rare requirement, but it has come up a couple of times in context of actually designing an ADFVC application. Finally, another reason why you may actually want multiple root, a root application modules is not one that you deliberately set out to uh, achieve, but through the fact of in the previous episodes of the ADF Architecture TV channel, you saw in the ADF Architecture Pattern set of episodes that we may pick an architectural pattern that actually separates our application into multiple workspaces that by the design or the architecture pattern actually had their own root application modules. So your architectural patterns might actually end up splitting your application into multiple root AMs. So as you can see, there are multiple different reasons why you might actually want multiple root application modules. Now, back to the question. So how many root application modules should you have? So let's revisit those reasons again. Now, one reason to have multiple root application modules was traditionally that, hey, you want to, for one user session, support multiple connections and transactions to, say, the Oracle database. So back in the good old days, and this would have been JDeveloper 10G and earlier, the only way to really satisfy that requirement was to, well, at design time, create multiple root AMs. But we know via the previous ADF Architecture TV episodes, in particular the Banner Tarslow uh, Data Control Scope episode, where we looked at the isolated option, we know now with one design time root AM that at, at runtime we can actually instantiate two instances of that root application module with separate connections and transactions. So this really removes the need in order, uh, design time need to create multiple root application modules if this was your original reason. You can see now we can still go with one root AM at design time. Okay, what about the second reason to support multiple data sources in your application? Now, again, this is a valid requirement. It's a very rare requirement, but a valid requirement that comes up every once in a while. So in this case, for this particular use case, you will require multiple root application modules at design time, each with its own JDBC URL or Jindy data source, pointing at your separate data sources as such. Now, given that we've visited or watched the Banner Taskflow Data Control Scope episode, and also more importantly, the Transaction Options episode for Banner Taskflows, we know that at runtime, if you're using those transaction options, what ADFBC will attempt to do is join all the root AMs up such that they only use one connection to the database. Now this is a problem for this specific requirement where we want to connect to multiple data sources. So it is essential that in order to do that, you use the no controller transaction option on your banded task loads. Otherwise, the inherent logic inside the framework will override what you're attempting to do here with multiple root AMs at design time and will actually join their connections up and this is not what you desire. In context of that particular option, we'll investigate in a further episode how that all works. So we'll give you some more detail about how the transaction options of the bounded task loads cause what I call a automagical nesting of your application modules such that they can share connections if you're using any of the transaction options of the BTF besides no controller transaction. Looking at the next reason, which was basically having separate tuning options per application module, Okay, again, this is a still valid requirement and arguably, yes, you could still go with multiple root application modules in this case. Though the use case for having AMs tuned differently, well, typically it's because you've got some view objects which have got to do directly with, with each user session, but you've got some other view objects that want to be um, used very rarely, such as lookups. Now, arguably, those type of view objects now should probably go into a shared application module that can be tuned differently from the normal user session type view objects and application modules that are being used. So definitely look to the shared application modules and we'll talk about those in a further episode soon.
If you are going to have multiple root application modules again in order to tune them separately, again be very careful of the bounded task load transaction options because anything but the no controller transaction option will cause the root AMs to amalgamate at runtime and depending on the version of JDeveloper you're in, in some cases you will not be able to tune the individual root application modules because the first one that gets called will take precedence. Now that may sound a little bit weird, again we'll address this in a future episode. The final reason is one that's driven by your architecture. You may have a cylinder pattern architecture where you have multiple workspaces, cylinder workspaces with their own model projects, their own EOs, VOs and root application modules. So here the architectural pattern has actually driven you to create multiple root AMs. So this wasn't really a requirement, but this is what the architecture is enforced upon you. Now this creates a problem when you reconstitute all those cylinder workspaces into your master application because inadvertently now per user session you do have multiple root AMs, you've got no choice. Now that wasn't what you intended to do because now you're starting to hit some scalability issues in the number of connections and transactions that each user session is taking out with the database. Well we need a solution for that. And as I've hinted upon here, the bounded task flow transaction options, and that is in this case not the no controller transaction option, but the three other options, always begin new transaction, always use existing transaction, and using existing transaction if possible. What will occur if you use those options in combination with your bounded task flows and the underlying root application modules, ADFBC will actually attempt to share the connections and transactions of the root application modules, rather than having one per root AM. So this can massively increase the scalability of your application and addresses the architectural issue that we introduce by breaking our model layer up into multiple cylinders, inadvertently creating multiple root AMs and inadvertently creating what would seem to be multiple connections and transactions with the database. But those bounded task flow transaction options do combat that, do solve that problem. Again, we'll be looking at those, how the uh, ADF business component actually joins up those connections and transactions under the covers underneath the root application modules at runtime, the actual mechanism in a further episode. So going back to the ultimate perennial question, how many root application modules should my application have? You now realize the question's wrong because the question really should be driven by your requirements, the reasons. I want multiple root application modules because I need multiple transactions and connections per my user sessions. So it's the reasons that drive the answer to that question. And the fact that you just started by asking how many root application modules, well, you were framing the answer before you could even think about the reasons. So think back to the reasons. In addition, in terms of the answers where we might go, oh, we do want two root application modules because we want multiple connections and transactions per user session, we need to be aware that, particularly in JDeveloper 11G, with the bounded task flow, data control scope, and transaction options, we even really easily change the reason for having root application modules. Because particularly with the isolated data control scope, we can now get away with one root application module at design time, where traditionally we'd need multiple to support multiple transactions. And the flip side is, if we have an architecture that requires us to accidentally or incidentally create multiple root application modules, and that's going to cause our application to have scalability issues, those VTF transaction options can actually modify the behavior of the ADF business component application modules, the number of connections and transactions they take out with the database, and therefore make your application scalable again. So the question now really isn't just about root application modules, it's the reasons and the other options in the framework that can change the behavior of the root AMs at runtime. So what we're going to look at at the next episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel is we're going to specifically talk about the transaction options of the bounded task flows and how they modify the ADF business component application module connections. So we're going to look at that in detail. We did allude to this in previous episodes, but now we're going to talk about the particular mechanics. So thanks very much for joining us today in today's ADF Architecture TV episode. I hope it's been useful. 
hope it's kind of given you an inkling now how we know what the ultimate question in ADF is, is not really the ultimate question anymore. And as we said, I hope you'll join us in the next episodes where we'll learn more about the magic under the covers, all this magic that ADF does for you in terms of ensuring you have a scalable application that your root applications aren't taking out too many connections and transactions with the database when that's not the intended behavior that you wanted. Thanks again, we'll see you in the next episode soon.